G'day everyone, I want to talk about the Ashes. During these times where there's not much live sport, I thought it might be fun to talk about what is considered to be the greatest rivalry in sport, England versus Australia. Where did this come from? How has it lasted for over a century, bringing us together as a sporting community and nations to, con to, to really fight hard for what is such a small little thing but means so much to both our countries? It's lasted right through the wars, through depressions, and now through coronavirus. So I wanted to share my favourite moments, and then I wanted to pass it on to Michael Vaughan today to explore his favourite moments, and then he can do the same, and so on and so forth it goes. But my favourite memory was back in 93, my very first tour to England. And I wasn't playing in the series, I was carrying the drinks, but it was the first chance for me to sing the team song. And what a great privilege and honour that has been the custom of singing that song. I've played in five Ashes series, but I'll never forget this. So I just wanted to put you back inside that dressing room in Manchester. Remember, that was the test match going way back when, when Warney bowled that ball of the century uh, to Mike Gatting to dismiss him for three. He's still blinking. He's like a rat in a flower bin. That was the, the surprise that he had on his face. It was also the, the test match where Ian Healy scored his first test match 100 in the second innings and Australia went on to win that test match series and that game comfortably. But for a young boy sitting there with his heroes, Alan Border, Boone, in fact most of the guys when I look on the wall up here that have been part of very special records in the Century Club, guys like Justin Langer, Ricky Ponting, Glenn McGrath, Shane Warne, Ian Healy, Mark Taylor, Mark Waugh, Steve Waugh, these were guys inside the dressing room at that time. A young Damien Martin was with me as well, touring. And it was just so mesmerising to see the absolute joy they all had on their face when it came to winning a Test match for Australia. So this, the, the jukebox was on, as they called it. And guys, you know, for example, like Johnny Diesel and the Injectors were playing. You had Midnight Oils blaring out. The beers were flowing and of course, the famous Jimmy Barnes. You know, songs like K-San getting played, or Back in Bow River, but my favorite, which was an unpopular one for most of the Julios, as we used to call them, Captain and Coach by Shane Warne, was Johnny Williamson. So I want to set the mood with a bit of Johnny Williamson, just to get us going before we actually sing the team song together. Blue, blue, is it me and you? Is it a cockatoo? Is it standing by your mates when he's in a fight? Or will she be right? True blue. Terrible guitar player. Sorry about that. But then we punch on into what is the legendary team song. David Boone. On a table, physio bench, players around him, beers flowing, creating all sorts of drama. We've got arms around each other, sweaty, drooling with beer, bunching in and creating this noise, this atmosphere. It was electric. And then Booney under muffled breath, who was custodian of the song. Right, hey, boys, yell it out. One, two, <laughs> <laughs> Underneath the Southern Cross I stand, a sprig of wattle in my hand, a native of our native land, Australia, you are beauty. Second verse, same as the first. And so on. Oh man, they were great times. You know, of all the series that I played, the singing of the team song, the camaraderie between England and Australia, the mateship, the beers at the end of the game, you know, that's what it was all about. It was about forging friendships through sport. Combative, yes. We hated each other. But off the field, we we're the greatest of mates. And uh, long may it continue. Anyway, that's my favourite moment. Vaughny, over to you, brother. Hey, guys. Uh, Ashy's memories from me. Um, well, I have to say, 05. Um, first time we'd uh, beaten you lot. 
in 18 years uh, to beat your team, a team that had so many stars, superstars of the game. Probably three or four, maybe five would get into the all-time Test 11 if you had a vote. Uh, that's how good you lot were. So for us to win, that was uh, very special. That's all shirt here from that series. Um, but for me, the Ashes is about the, the kind of friendships, the, the kind of camaraderie, uh, those moments in the dressing room. So the moment after the winning 05 stands in my memory, all you guys drinking with us. Uh, but 2002, 2003, my first tour down under, being in that Sydney dressing room. This is actually the bat I used to get 100 at Sydney. There it is, the old purist. It's got a bit of signature, the 183. Uh, in the second innings, on a pair I was, Brett Lee in the first innings, managed to scrape a few in the second. But being in that Sydney dressing room, the famous Sydney dressing room, Rocky, the uh, dressing room attendant, the late Rocky, used to leave us a message on the dressing room wall every single day to give us some motivation. Even though he's in Aussie, he wanted us to do pretty well. Uh, but sat in that dressing room in Sydney, in amongst yourself, Justin Langer, uh, Steve Waugh, Steve getting that famous 100, but just being in that famous dressing room at uh, the SCG, drinking a few cans. Uh, John Howard, the uh, Prime Minister, he came in at the time. Uh, that for me, with the Oval, just being in the dressing room, with players that throughout those five matches that you play, you hate, but by the end of it, when you're in that dressing room, you all realise that we're only human, we all are pretty normal, we all like a, a drink or two, we all like playing the game of cricket. Uh, so it's those two moments, just sat in the dressing room, 2003 in Sydney, 2005 at the Oval in the dress room. Cheers, mate. Sir up. G'day, guys. Uh, thanks very much for the Ashes Memory nomination, Alf. Uh, appreciate it. I've been love, absolutely love listening to everyone's memories. Uh, it's brought back some great times, that's for sure, and brought a smile to my face a few times too. So, uh, yeah, keep it going, guys. Um, look, I've got so many wonderful Ashes memories. Um, you know, growing up in the 70s and 80s, yep, I'm old. I'm uh, 51 this year. So anyone my age will remember the backyard cricket and trying to be Jeff Thompson or Dennis Lilly or Ian Chappell, Ian Botham, uh, Tony Gregg, and all those guys that played in that time and watching some wonderful cricket. Um, I suppose fast forward to 1989 when I played my first ever league cricket if they were Imperial in Bristol and watching Alan Border regain the Ashes series in 89 set the dream alive of saying, I want to be part of these Ashes series. And I was lucky enough to be part of my first ever Ashes series in 93 and what a first test match it was. And, uh, well, I mean, Graham Gooch was out handled ball. Ian Healy made his first test hundred, couldn't get the helmet off the helmet strap. He was trying to get off. He couldn't get it off to celebrate. Um, uh, Merv knocking over Mike Gadding with the last ball of the day. Um, was just awesome, and I managed to get one past you too, Gat. Um, thanks very much for missing it, mate. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and from then on, all, all through the rest of my career, every Ashes series was special. Um, it was just outstanding. 2005 obviously stands out as a special series, even though we lost. Uh, played in nine Ashes series, and that was the only one I lost. Um, it was an uh, amazing time, that. I think the, the camaraderie, uh, the sportsmanship, the skill that was on display really capture the imagination of uh, the, the public all over the world. So that one's not my favourite memory, but it has to be mentioned. Um, yeah, one out of nine, it's not, it's not bad, it's not bad. But I think above all, it was the mateship, the friendships that last forever, that were formed and made from both England and Australia. Um, the camaraderie between both sides, it was always played in great spirit, hard, tough, but fair. Um, everybody used to always go in each other's dressing room and have a beer with each other after the day's play. Um, I think that's what really stands out for my Ashes memories. Yes, there were some great test matches. Yes, there was some. I was very lucky to do some pretty special things in Ashes as well. But more or less, it was the camaraderie, mateship, and the friendships that were made for life. That's what really stood out for me. Um, yeah, uh, the Adelaide test match was also awesome. After Andrew Flintoff decided to declare at 550 ahead, England were 50 runs ahead going into the last day and lost. We managed to do that. Well done. And we won that 5-0, that Forgotten Ashes series. Um, but look, it was just great. Great friends that have lasted a lifetime. Great memories. Um, you know, one of my favourites, I suppose, I have to... Uh, you know, my, playing in front of your children is always pretty special. And my last ever test match at the MCG in front of my children, my family and my friends that have been there for my whole life was, um, was pretty amazing. Uh, Boxing Day 2006. 
um, in front of, yeah, as I said, 92,000 of my closest friends as well. <laughs> um, you know, taking a seven, my 700th test wicket in front of my children was probably one of my favourite memories of all time in Ashes battles. Um, and yeah, as I said, look, the camaraderie, mateship and sportsmanship and the friendships that were made were, were outstanding. So I have to pass it on now. Uh, I'm going to pass on not to a player, but someone who has seen it all. That is you, Errol Alcott, a.k.a. Hooter. Thanks, Vaughnie and Hados for the nomination. Now, I've got lots of Ashes memories, especially growing up. I've got Warney 700 at the MCG in front of his home crowd. Tugger scoring 100 off the last ball in front of his home crowd, SCG. I remember as a kid watching them and absolutely loving it. Uh, but I'm going to go for something a bit more personal to me and more recent. Um, just in the last Ashes series, the first test at Birmingham. Start of a big test series. We've got a couple of guys coming back from their first game in a year or so. First morning, we're sent into bat. Overcla overcast skies, get off to a rocky start. In walks Steve Smith. Bats out the whole day, gets 150 odd. Gets up to a respectable total. Second innings, game still in the balance. Smithy goes again, another 100 odd. Nathan Lyon takes six for in the second innings. Wins the game, sets up the series. At edge, Baston, meant to be the fortress. Got up started the series perfectly so that's uh that's a recent memory the crowd was just crazy up on that that hill dress ups for five days just chanting did not stop um so it was really really satisfying slow closely followed by the manchester win a couple of weeks later but i'm gonna stick with that birmingham win thanks Camo, uh for the nomination mates um i know vaughney and hados have done this as well uh look my favorite um Ash's moment would have to be Adelaide 2006. Uh, England um, batted first um, after being beaten in the first Test match. Um, you know, why wouldn't you bat first at Adelaide Oval? Uh, it's a wonderful batting track, um, and they uh, obviously set out to to try and uh, bat as well as they can and then post a big title. And uh, that's just exactly what they did. Uh, Paul Collingwood brought up uh, 200. I think him and KP put on 300 uh, plus. I think KP got 150. Um, quite a rare um, thing in that game as well that McGrath, Pidge, went none for 100. Um, you know, obviously a world-class bowler, but uh, not too often you see world-class bowlers go none for 100. Um, that just, you know, shows how well um, England applied themselves um, and uh, got on top of the Australians there and declared, I think, over 550. Um, I think, you know, when Australia went out to bat, we lost two cheap wickets, um, Alfie and... Uh, and Hados. Uh, I think Punna, Punna got 140, Huss 90, and I think um, Michael Clark got 120 odd as well. And uh, Will dismiss I think, for about 515, 520. Um, Matthew Hoggard, Matthew Hoggard uh, got 70, I think, as well. Um, 42 overs, long time in the, in the field, 163 overs. You know, at this stage, you're looking at both teams out there, you know, 500 plus total on the board. Um, you, you're pretty much uh, looking at a draw. But the attitude you have to take into these situations is the game's still on, on the line. Um, you know, you leave no stone unturned and uh, going to the, obviously, the, I think the fifth day, um, England lost a couple of wickets early. Uh, Australia came out, turned up, um, as they always do. Uh, what a wonderful team um, that was, obviously, led by Punna. And then uh, I think the turning, the turning point in that game, I think, was when Warney bowled KP around his legs. Um, I think KP went to pat one around the corner. Warney got one out of the rough. Uh, ended up taking Forfa, I think it was. Um, and then, you know, we dismissed him for 168. Obviously set, I think, 30, 35, 36 overs maybe late that afternoon to come out and try and get 160, uh, 68. Uh, was obviously going to be a, a tough assignment. Uh, you know, two quick early wickets, both openers removed. Um, you know, Alfie trying to accelerate, uh, tried his best. Ados tried his best. Um, and I think obviously a couple of guys there um, got some quick runs. I think Punter got some quick runs. I think Pup got 20 odd or 30 odd, if not many. And then, um, you know, the, the magical moment, um, just seeing one of the all time great blokes, legend. I was fortunate enough to play with this guy. Um, you know, Mr. Nice Guy, Mr. Cricket, 
uh, leads the team song, uh, led the team song when I was playing with him. Um, but to see him hit the hit the winning runs, uh, 61 not out. Um, with the, I think it was a couple of balls of spare or maybe an over the spare. Is a memory that I'll, I'll never ever forget, um, and that's why it's one of my favourite um, Ashes moments. And you see that played in the highlights real quite often. But uh, that's one I definitely recommend uh, people who, who love Test match cricket, especially Ashes um, Ashes cricket, to, to go back and, and and watch that, especially if you're an Australian fan. Um, it was a great Test match um, and one that I, I never forget. And I'm sure the guys that were playing uh, will never forget that as well. And um, on the back of that. I'd like to, to nominate uh, the captain of that uh, 2006 winning game in Adelaide, Ricky Ponting, to give us, it's going to be very challenging for him, to give us his uh, favourite uh, Ashes moment um, in, in his uh, playing days. Obviously, he played a lot of test matches and captained, uh, um, obviously, a lot of winning Ashes sides. Um, but hopefully, Pana, you can give us an insight to, to one of your favourite um, Ashes moments. Over to you. Well, thanks, Davey, for your nomination. It's a great initiative, I think, that the big fella, Matty Hayden's come up with to get some of our old blokes talking about Ashes cricket and some of the great memories that we have from the game. So, you know, growing up in the northern suburbs of, of Tasmania in Launceston, it was always a childhood dream of mine, one, to get a chance to play for Australia, but hopefully get a chance to play some Ashes cricket. Um, it was all over thought about when I was playing those games in the backyard. All of, those games are always Ashes test matches. So... For someone that played a lot of cricket, I think I played in eight or nine Ashes series to sit back. Now, I've obviously got lots of great memories and some that are not so fond as well. And I want to start with some that probably aren't so fond, and that's the 2005 series in England where we were beaten by Michael Vaughan and his men. But when I think back now, I still have, even though we lost, I have some unbelievable memories of what was just probably one of the all-time great Test match series ever. Um, as I said, Vaughan and his men were too good. They outplayed us. Some of the moments in that series, I mean, we had a great opener at, at Lords, won the Test match there comfortably. We went to Edgebaston, where it was just one of the all-time great Test matches, one run victory to England there on that occasion. We go to Manchester, we had to battle out the last day and day and a bit and try and bat out for a draw, which is a situation that the Australian cricket team hadn't been in much for a long, long time. We managed to do that. We go to Trent Bridge, we're outplayed there again, and England snuck across the line in another amazing game of cricket and then obviously it culminated at the Oval with us going there needing to win the test to retain the Ashes and unfortunately we weren't quite good enough but you know the everlasting image I think that came out of that series was Freddie and, and Binger down on one knee celebrating the end of the amazing game you know Freddie's first thought was to get to Binger and, and and just show some great sportsmanship and I think that's they're the things that I'll remember most about the Ashes battles that we had is when we we're on the field it was on for young and old, you know, is playing the this, this sort of cricket that Australia, that I sort of certainly wanted to play anyway, the way that I was brought up, was going to be hard-nosed, tough test match cricket. Um, and we enjoyed that. And so, so did Vaughan and his men in that 05 series. So, you know, we, we battled hard on the field. We got together at the end of that series. We shared a beer and, and that's what Ashes cricket was all about. Now, the next series that I wanted to talk a little bit about was the one that Davies just mentioned, which was the 06, 07 series, which gave us a little chance at redemption. It lit the fire in the belly of some of our senior blokes. Uh, and we worked long and hard to make sure we're up and ready for the start of that series. And we got off to a great start. Brisbane was a great win for us. We got to Adelaide. We were completely outplayed in the first part of that, in that test match. But I think we all knew that if we played our best cricket from sort of the back end of day two onwards, if we played perfect test match cricket, we all felt that we could win the game. And that's how it turned out to be probably the most remarkable test win that I was a part of. I remember going to Perth winning uh, in Perth and clinching the series over there. But the memories and the overriding memories that I have from Ashes cricket are the ones that happened in the Sydney Test match where we had Warren, McGrath and Justin Langer, three of the all-time great servants of Australian cricket, all retire in the one game. Glenn got a wicket with his last ball in Ashes cricket, which was fitting for him. Warney did what he does. And then Justin Langer had the stage set perfectly for him and his great mate, Matthew Hayden, in the fourth innings of that game to go out and pick off 40-odd runs to win. Stuff that fairy tales are made of. Now, it was an emotional time for me. Now, those guys I mentioned there are some of my best mates in the game. I was captain to, to look around the dressing room for the next test match and realise those guys weren't there. It was always going to be something difficult. But Big Doss and JL, they got the job done, steered us across the line. We won the Series 5-0. And the celebrations with us and with the England players in the dressing rooms at the end of that game is something that I miss, but also something that I'll, I'll always remember. So there are some of my... Great memories from Ashes cricket. 
And the person that I want to nominate to carry this theme on is Kevin Peterson. All the best. Cheers. Ash's memories. Thanks, uh, Pana. Yes, Ash's memories. Fond memories. Incredibly fond memories for English cricketers and for Australian cricketers and for fans. I think you get remembered at the end of your career on how you played in an Ashes series and how you went in Ashes cricket. And you understand the significance of it when you turn up at test grounds and they're full. Always full. That 2005 Ashes that you talked about, the grounds were full before we even went in. But I've got a little confession that I'm going to make after I've chatted about uh, Brisbane. Pana, the uh, confession is going to come just towards the end of this clip and uh, it's going to make you giggle and it might frustrate the hell out of you. However, Brisbane, the love-hate relationship with Brisbane, uh, fond memories. I do have fond memories. I played my 100th test match in Brisbane. Um, I had the most beautiful battle with Shane Warne in 2006 after he was apparently too friendly to me in 2005 in the Ashes series here in England. So we had a big ding-dong. Big, big battle, battle of words. He was trying to knock me over. He threw the ball at my head and I was, and I was thinking after, I should have just ramped a couple past Gilchrist's uh, um, ears. And uh, it's fond memories like that. But one in particular, when I was standing on the boundary in, an Ashes, in the, one of the Ashes Test matches there in Brisbane, where I was sent down to the boundary, I was sent down to third man and as the pantomime villain, every time I played an Ashes Test match in Australia, I got hammered, 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 hammered. And Freddie sent me down to the boundary. I was down the third man and, oh, goodness, I was getting, I was, I was thinking, about well, how on earth can I at least try and stem the flow of abuse? So I thought a little kid then, he was um, asking, KP, 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 please come and sign my back, please come and sign my back, please come and sign my back. I was thinking, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I? Ball after ball after ball. And I thought, you know what? There's 20,000 people. They're all abusing me. Let me just go and do it. As I got there, and I think it's recorded. It's on camera. I go there and I go and put my hand forward. As I put my hand forward to take the bat, the kid goes, way! And so do 10,000 other people. They go, way! And so from then on in, I just thought, Brisbane, I've got no interest. I've got absolutely no interest. And you know what, I've taken it so far down the line now that I can't start saying that I really like Brisbane, even though I do like Brisbane. I've played my 100th test match there, for goodness sake, so I've got to like the place. My confession, Melbourne, Boxing Day test match. Pana, you'll know all about this. Siddle runs up. Siddle knocked me over for fun. I nick one to the keeper. Haddon goes up. Everybody goes up. Pana runs at me from uh, extra cover. Ah! Alim Dahl says not out. Or Billy Bowden was, Alim Dahl, Billy Bowden. Panther gives him the biggest serve ever. He walks away, and again, this is also caught on camera. As he walks away, he starts walking away to extra cover. I gave it the old... That was caught on camera. The wink was caught on camera. I think NASA was commentating at the time. Nothing was made of it, but I absolutely smashed the cover of it. I just couldn't let Peter Siddle get me out again. Those are a couple of my memories, man. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I G'day, everyone. Well, I've been nominated to do my favourite Ashes moment uh, by Errol Olcott, the great Hooter, one of the best, if not the best physio in the world in any sport. Hoot, a huge thank you, mate, firstly for the nomination, but also for the amazing work you did throughout my career. Got me back on the paddock, up for game after game. Um, and I wouldn't have played as much cricket if it wasn't for you. I think back to 2005 Ashes when I went over on my ankle, Fully ruptured two ligaments on the outside, plus a bit of bone damage on the inside of my ankle. And you got me back inside a week. I can't think of any other physio who would have been able to achieve that. So, mate, thank you very much. Um, also to Haydos, I think this is your baby. Came up with the idea of uh, all the old boys and few of the younger ones to uh, give their favourite Ashes moments. So, well done, mate. Um, for me, uh, Ashes cricket is the ultimate. I remember growing up in Narromine. Now, I wanted to play cricket for Australia as a fast bowler and to come up against England. Um, you know, I remember watching Ashes series back then. You know, Hoggy, Rodney Hogg getting 41 wickets at 12.85. Uh, Terry Allerman swinging the ball in England and knocking England over for, for fun. Uh, Merv Hughes, just that lion-hearted effort in 93. Uh, Dennis Lilly, who was my hero uh, and the greatest fast bowler of all time. You know, he took nearly averaged... Uh, seven wickets a game against England, which is absolutely incredible. So any test he played in. But for me, some of my greatest, well, bit of a mixed bag. My first test match against England, 
Finished with the figures of none for 120. Didn't play the next three games, so not the best start up at the Gabba. And my first test over in the UK at Edgebaston, we lost by 10 wickets. So not my favourite moments there, but after that, things went pretty well. Um, you know, some great memories. Lords, any test match at Lords is special. And to get your name up on the honour board, there is, is something that I really wanted to do. So to get my name up there, first test match to walk off with eight is pretty special. Um, lots of other ones as well. Hung on to a catch to get rid of Vaughny, uh, down in Adelaide off, off, uh, off, off Shano, which was pretty special. Um, but to me, I think my favourite one was, uh, well, 05 was a topsy turvy uh, match. The roller coaster of emotions was incredible. First test at Lords, picked up my 500th test wicket, which was amazing. Then a tread on the ball and then to see what happened the rest of the series was incredible. Fair enough, England outplayed us, but, uh, that was the first Ashes series we lost. So in 06, 07, we we're keen to get the Ashes back to where we felt they belong. Uh, you know, we're a little bit older, a little bit long in the tooth. I think Beefy came out and called us Dad's Army. So we we're keen to, you know, prove a, a point on a couple of different reasons. So to win in, in Brisbane in a good test match, Warney bowled us to victory in, at, um, Adelaide on that last day. Absolutely incredible. Gillies 100 at, uh, at the Wacker, one of the quickest of all time was special. And then Shano at, uh, Melbourne in front of capacity crowd predicted how he was going to get Andrew Strauss out to me, the, you know, that, that over and then, uh, executed it perfectly for his 700th test wicket, which was absolutely amazing. But to me, my favorite memory or one of them, uh, is SCG home ground. It can't get any better than that against Ashes chance to win five nil. Last day, bowling in tandem, nine wickets down. Warney bowling from the Paddington end. I was bowling from uh, the Randwick end. And I was lucky enough to get the final wicket. So a wicket on my last ball in test cricket. Slower ball to Jimmy Anderson. He didn't pick it, chipped it straight up in the air. Straight to mid on where Mike Hussey, Mr. Cricket, was fielding. And Huss never misses a chance and hung on to it. And then to see Haydas and JL go out and get the winning runs to seal the series 5-0. It doesn't get any better than that. And then I remember walking around the SCG. I had my daughter Holly Marms, my son James walking beside, waving to the crowd. Some special moments there. And it was the final test for Warney, for JL, for myself. I think Mardo had finished uh, his test career early on in that series. So a lot of amazing moments and a lot of emotions then as well. But if there's anything I miss from cricket, you know, I loved playing, loved competing, and and the team that I was lucky enough to play in was absolutely incredible. But I don't miss the, you know, playing out in the middle. What I miss is the time around the teammates, celebrating those wins in the change room, staying for hours and hours after the day's play or after the test finished. That to me is the ultimate. So those celebrations on that final day of the 06-07 Ashes series uh, was incredible. So. Yeah, so many amazing memories. Ashes cricket for Australia is still the ultimate. And, uh, yeah, cheers, Haydos. Cheers, Hoot.